just, I really like that music so much. And I know that everybody else loves it so much because it's not random sounding at all. And it's just beautiful. And I'm trying to adjust the light. Oh no, the light's not, how's the light not coming? Oh, I hit the wrong button. There we go. Hello everybody. And welcome to Drinks with Dempsey, the most popular television show not on television. Because it's not a television show. It's a bunch of friends hanging out together, having refreshments, and talking about books and sports and weather. And boy, do I have a doozy for the forecast today here in Chattanooga. I'm going to have to take another look at my app just to make sure it hasn't already changed. It's been the same for the last four days. They've been saying it. They're saying it again. You know what they're saying. Here, I'm looking at it right now. You know, I really like the AccuWeather app. I, I like to cross-reference Weather Channel's app with it. Um, but now they have these ads where when I click what's the daily, like the daily forecast, now it's like popping up these ads. And I'm like, you know, I like ads when they're relevant to me. So like Facebook does great ads. They're always relevant. They make me want to buy things. Instagram, they make me want to buy things. Like I'll be scrolling through. Sometimes I'll just look through my feed to find something that I want to buy. I don't usually buy it because I'm too cheap to do that, but I still like to look at things that I would like to buy or maybe ask for for presents, you know. Father's Day is coming up. St. Patty's Day is coming up. It's before Father's Day. Easter is coming up. I mean, there's lots of reasons to give me gifts. And so, uh, you know, I don't normally ask for much. But I think that this year, the 2022, this is the year I'm going to start asking for a lot. I, I'm, I've got a lot of things that I've been, been compiling through the years. And things that I want. Number one on that list New socks. That's not true. I really don't have that much that I want. So I never ask for anything. But this year I'm going to change that. I got to think of some things, some stuff that I want or experiences that I want. Like the UK this summer. <laughs> All right, let's look at the forecast. Everybody, my name is Ernest Dempsey. In case you're new to the show and there are 13,000 people watching live right now, so maybe there is a new person watching. If you are new, get used to me moving around a lot because I do that. And uh, if I don't see your question or comment, don't feel like I'm ignoring you. It's just that I didn't see it. Sometimes the comments don't pop up. I don't know why. All right. Before we get to the forecast... Let's take a look here and see who's watching the show, shall we? Ray McGuire is here, and Carrie Kelly, and Laura, and Kat. Hello. Hello, Heather. <laughs> James Slater, where it's currently 78. Very nice. James was... I was sitting outside last night looking at the stars and it was like 38 degrees and it didn't bother me. And I was like, have I finally adjusted to cold weather? Could I move to Green Bay if I really wanted to? I mean, I don't, but no offense to the people in Green Bay. Lovely little town. But man, it's cold. Oh, let's see. Chad's here. Yeah, you're in you're in cold land. You got COVID. I don't mean to laugh at that, but it's the way you said it. Well, you know what to do. All the vitamin D and the zinc stuff and the vitamin C. Drink a ton of water, ton of Jim Beam, ton of rest. You know, green tea really helps. I was reading a fascinating study about cannabis yesterday that suggests that in pretty significant data numbers that cannabis, <laughs> I'm going to laugh at this one, Cannabis actually kind of prevents it from replicating and developing. So basically it doesn't kill it, but it effectively doesn't let it live. So that was pretty cool. So kudos to you states and nations that have legalized it. Good for you. Legal, uh, we've got CBD here in Tennessee. 
and delta eight. But seriously, if can't we'll finish the hellos in a minute, but if cannabis does stop it in its tracks, okay? If it does, shouldn't it be mandated that everybody get medicinal grade cannabis? I mean, if they're going to mandate vaccines and they're going to mandate masks, shouldn't they mandate some form of that? Well, why would we want to follow the science, right? <laughs> that doesn't pay big pharma. Sorry, conspiracy rant. All right, let's keep going. Juliet, hey! Morning from Melbourne. One of my um, one of my good friends is down there. He just texted me a little while ago. My friend Chris Swaffer is that's where him and his family live. She's a she's an Aussie, like you. I, I mean, I'm assuming you're an Aussie, right? You could be an American expat living in Australia. By the way, I saw what you guys did to Djokovic. <laughs> Gonna deport him like the greatest tennis player in the last decade. <laughs> you, can, you can just deport him. He's won the Australian Open like nine times. <clears throat> yeah, that's like a record, too. He's won it more than anybody. And Australia's kicking him out because he's not vaccinated. <laughs> Woo, that's tough. I don't know if I agree with that. Part B of that is tennis. You're very solitary. Like I played tennis for a good 10 years of my life growing up and maybe more than that. More like, yeah, it was more like 12 years because I started when I was five. So then I stopped when I was like 17, 18, but yeah, you're not even around anybody and you're outdoors. That's the, I don't get it. I don't understand, but whatever. Die on that hill if you want to. What's up? Happy Friday. Hello, Samnosh. Oh, yeah, you're on day five. I think everybody around me had it, which means I probably had it like two weeks ago, three weeks ago, something like that. Two weeks ago, like right after Christmas. Kid was sniffling for a few days. Megan was feeling lousy for like, I don't know, five days, which is weird for her because she never gets sick. And here I am. Was that a loud whistle? I'm just done. It's fine. It's, it's right as rain. I know what you're going to ask. And I am not going to answer that question. So let's continue the hellos. Hello. Allison Valentine. You're at the doctor. Or DR. I think that means doctor. Oh, thank you. I'm glad you liked the new trailer. Yeah. Oh man, I forgot. I meant to send out um, the email for the with the trailer link to everybody today. I can still do that right after the show. I'll. I'm not going to do a full hour today. We're going to do 40, 45 minute show because uh, I've got to head downstairs. <clears throat> but I'm still here. I'm still here. We're still rocking it. Um, I've got some fun new content coming out. I've got to uh, sit down and shoot it next week and uh, it's video content featuring yours truly that I think uh, you're going to enjoy and laugh at, I hope, or else it will be a massive waste of time I could have spent writing. But I am I am still pushing ahead. We're at the 31,000 word mark for, uh, or 30, yeah, almost 31,000 word mark for Righteous, Righteous Dawn, which is Gideon Wolf 2. So that one's coming along. I should have a much more productive week next week because I was doing some edits this week. So I should get that puppy back up to, let's call it, mm, feels like a 55,000 number next week. And that'll put me within striking distance to finish before the end of the month, which is right on track for our massive 2022 release schedule that I'm looking at over here to the side, my right, your left. I like that one. Very nice. Happy Friday. Another. <laughs> what the? Where do you live? I mean, I know Canada, but good grief. 
my friends in Fairbanks, I don't think have it that bad. God, and Fairbanks is crazy. Mm. No, having COVID is not fun. It's not fun at all. It's uh, for me, the times that I had, it was the most annoying nagging cold that I've ever had. Like it was uh, some people might say, it's not a cold. Well, it is technically the same kind of virus. The cold virus is a coronavirus, right? Blue virus is a coronavirus. They're all viruses. They're all bugs. Stupid aliens that get inside our bodies. Aliens are real. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, uh, it was, you know, I felt sicker, but it's not fun. It's not fun at all. It felt just as bad when I got the vaccine. Like I felt, I think I actually felt worse the, for like 36 hours. I felt worse after the vaccine. So there's that. Good times. That's why when people are asking me if I'm going to get the booster, I'm like, no, I'm good. I think I've had, I know I've had it once, like COVID once, maybe the boot and maybe twice. And I've had the shots and um, I have other medicines that help prevent it. So um, based on, you know, research that I'm reading about, so I don't need it. Good. People are going to start requiring it to go into the UK. Better not do it, Sam Nash. You better not start requiring the booster to come to the UK. So I don't want to get that. I don't want to feel like that again. It was terrible. I'm already protected. We had a blizzard last February. I know it was the first one ever in Texas. I know it was tragic. And now 911 Lone Star is doing a whole show based on that story. Which, you know, I'm not going to like knock them for that. That's smart. You should take current events or like sort of like recent events and meld them into stories. I just do it the reverse. I usually, what, what I do is I see into the future of what will be recent events to everyone else after they happen. And then I write about them then, and then people freak out and they like wonder, how did he know? I just thought he was making this stuff up. I know, right? This guy's like Nostradamus over here. Whoa, Nostradamus. How do you know who that is? You don't know who Nostradamus is? Everybody knows Nostradamus, man. He was like 80% accurate on all his forecasts and predictions. Yeah, well, who did he say was going to win the Olympics? What do you mean? The winter or the summer games? Uh, they didn't have winter games in Athens. He's not from Greece, idiot. You see, this is the kind of stuff that happens in my head. You get these sort of like conversations going on. It can get ugly at times. So you like the new hair? Thank you. And thank you to Ashton who cut it. I think it looks pretty good. He did all right. It's, you know, especially this side. I really like, oh, stupid. This side I like the best. Man, it looks great over here. This side, a little, little high, a little high in the back. But I loved it. It's my, he's my new barber. I have a new barber shop. And uh, I'm excited because it's like a guy barber shop. There was just dudes in there. They've got like hip hop music going on. They've got ESPN on two screens. There's just a cool vibe going on in there. Where I used to go, it was all it was all the ladies. And so it was like, you know, all those chemical smells that, you know, women get in their hair. Not all women, but the women in this place. And uh and it was all women working there, and I always felt out of place. Now, that said, Monica cuts amazing hair. She is a master to make me look presentable, but it always felt a little weird. So here we are. We had a, an amicable breakup. Is that the word? Amenable? Amenable breakup? We had a good breakup and um, still friends. But I'm seeing Ashton now, and I'm okay with it. I really am. I wasn't sure it was going to be because a lot of y'all know when you leave a stylist, it's it's tough. It's tough. Oh, look, my buddy, my buddy just messaged me from Australia. Australia. Let's see what he says. Making my morning coffee. Happy Sabbath. That's right. It's already Saturday down there. What machine do you use? That's random. 
<laughs> guess. I don't like texting when I'm uh, talking to someone, but he's in Australia. I'm going to tell him in a few minutes that one of you's in Melbourne. I don't know. Where, I, I think he's closer to Sydney. Ooh, a Dexter mug. That's cool. Yeah, I hope you guys feel better soon. Southern blizzard, snow apocalypse. People will die without milk and bread. You know, Mike. You know. The bread aisles, I mean, I'm just I, I kind of just want to go see. Like I want to drive over to Publix and to Target just to see. Cause if I, I I don't watch the low I don't watch any news, but if I was watching the local news, I would imagine they would be talking about the snow coming on Sunday. And I'm like, and I just checked the forecast on the weather app. 96% chance of snow and mixed precipitation on Sunday. I'm going to tell you right now, we may get some mixed precipitation. We will not be sledding or making snowmen or having snowball fights. That does not happen here. It just doesn't. So, I, you know, if it happens, cool. I enjoy it. You will be 73 and sunny. I love it. <laughs> yes. Ducks lives matter. Interesting. Oh yeah, no, I use CBD. I use CBD. There's um there's also a Canadian study about CBD and how it can help block um uh, COVID from developing in your lungs causing the pneumonia component. So, I'm a huge believer in CBD. I'm friends with my I say friends. We don't hang out. I just buy CBD from her, but she runs, I call her a friend. She runs the local shop up the street and, um, man, she's got her science down. She's got like this whole screen in there and she like points out all the terpenes and what they do and the cannabinoid, you know what I mean? The active ingredients and then like cannabinoids. I can never get that word right. Cannabinoids. Cannabinoid. It's just so fun to say. Anyway, yeah, it is helpful, but it doesn't like give you a buzz. And so people don't think it works. It doesn't have to give you, it doesn't have to get you high to like do it, be doing something. Yeah. You can take a nap from two to three to four. And not get, oh yeah. Yeah. I know you are legal there. That's right. Well, listen, go get you some gummies. Tell them Dr. Earn sent you. And that'll also, those gummies will help with the nap and your nap Right here where I see it says uh, 2.30 to 4 will become 2.30 to 10 a.m. the next day. Boom. Look at all these great hashtags. Yeah, I know. It goes against the narrative. Ernie Ernie got went off on his, like, anti-big pharma thing. Look, I have friends that are pharmaceutical reps. I have, you know, I have friends that work for those companies. Not saying that they're entirely evil. I'm just saying you have an opioid crisis on your hands. People die and popping pills all the time that they got illegally, and yet we've gotten zero documented cases of cannabis overdose in the history of mankind. And one's showing some real efficacy against something that everybody's afraid of right now. Well, not everybody, but you know, a lot of people are. Just saying. Let's use a little common sense here, shall we? Oh, we're talking about the government. Never mind. <laughs> yeah, this left side definitely looks better. Oh, it looks, oh, it almost looks as good as Nick Thacker's. Man, talk about something to aspire to. Whew, if I could look like that. Hey, there she is. What's up, KB? Douglas Davis. Well, hey there, Lori. It's good to see you. Welcome to the show. I said that like she was. And now here's Lori. <laughs> that was stupid. Why did I say it like that? Idiot. Yeah, yeah. The nor'easters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sometimes they sweep down this way. Uh, no, we were just talking about it. I, you know, it's coming this way. But where are you? Are you in? Are you in North Tennessee? We're not going to get any snow. We never get the snow here. Never. I'm slow on the comments right now. I'm always way behind. Hello, Kathy. Don't ever apologize for being late. Don't ever apologize to us. You are always welcome to show up whenever you want. 
one one uh, one of our reader friends is uh, has made a habit of showing up in the last like three minutes of every show. This one and the coffee one. It's kind of her brand, and I like that she does that. Like she pops in for the last few minutes, and then I think she goes back through and watches the whole thing later. So. <laughs> <laughs> the, yeah, the one inch is a Texas snowstorm, isn't it? I know. You'll smuggle me in if I can't get in without a booster. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. This, things are weird. Look, I'm I'm all for vaccines, and I'm all for you know public health or whatever. But I'm not for mandates. I've said that from the beginning. You got to have some sort of. I'm not, I'm not. I don't get down with that. And. People say it's a public health crisis. Well, aren't you vaccinated and aren't you masked up? Why are you worried? You're gonna you're gonna overburden the healthcare system. Nope. I have friends in the hospital that said they are at like 30% right now, so they're good. It's all about the COVID talk today. I'm gonna piss people off. There you go. Somebody's gonna say he just cussed. He said piss people off. I say that in my books. I don't feel like that's a bad word. I won't have the booster. Either. Yeah, you know, it. really, <clears throat> I'm all for if it's scientifically going to help people, that's great. <clears throat> but <clears throat> based on my demographic and the, the information I have, I'm, I'm not at risk and I'm not going to put my body through that again. It was, I felt worse after the shot than I did when I had COVID before. Same same symptoms, but worse. It was annoying. So, yeah. I went to the crazy side. That's right. <clears throat> Rain and a possible mix, Beth Kelly. In Virginia? I don't think so. You're going to get slammed with snow. Wait, you're in... I know where you are. I don't want to, like, out you to everybody. Um... <laughs> Dr. Ern, that's right. That's me. This is not medical advice. I do not give medical advice or legal advice. Okay. This is this is for entertainment purposes only. And enlightenment. So I know I've I've angered a few people. Yeah. I just feel like people should be able to choose to do what they want. My brother has CBD at or snail juice. Okay. Is it legal over there? Oh, I do love the random questions from Allison. What kind of research did you do for Where Horizons End? And how long did you spend researching before you started the book? So each one of my books has, on average, this is an average, so it changes a little bit, but on average, every book has about one hour for every thousand words. So an hour of research for every thousand words. So 90,000 word book. I think Where Horizons End is like 93, 94,000 words. So about 90 hours, maybe, maybe a little bit less. Um, some of this one was a lot of speculation. So, uh, and for this one, it was more geographical research. I've never been to China. There's a lot of, most of the places I write about, I haven't been to. I have to research them online and magazines and books and interviews, stuff like that. So, um, and, and not very, not usually interviews. When I say interviews, it's usually when I've like meet somebody from there and I ask them lots of questions to the point of annoying them. So, um, but yeah, probably, probably this one probably had like 80 hours, maybe, maybe 85 hours of research in it. Not all front loaded, um, but a good amount of it is front loaded. What ends up happening is I'll do about 60 to 60% 60 of the, the research up front. Uh, like at night, I'll be reading or I'll put it, be putting together ideas. And then um, I say I'm a lot. I know I do that. Sorry. But I start writing the story. And then every day that I write usually has an hour to two of research built into it. So I have... I'm on a six hour work day basically because I take my kid to school in the morning and then I can work from 
8, 8, probably realistically 8.30 to 2.30 with a lunch in there, a workout in there. So I get maybe four to five hours of actual work done each day, which is pretty tight. So I have to do some stuff at night sometimes. But um, yeah, I uh, I do research along the way, if that makes sense. So I could be, I could write books yeah, I could write a little faster. My daily word count could be a little better. Right now, I'm averaging like 41, 4,200 words a day, and which is strong. Like that's a really good amount, but I could probably do five or 6,000 a day if I had one extra hour, but whatever. You know, it, it's how it goes. Knoxville is predicting to get four inches of snow, I know. You guys, uh, you guys get it though. Like you and Nashville actually get the snow sometimes. We, it wraps around us and then comes back up to you guys. Thank you so much, Ray. You're so kind for the snow. Well, good. I just got, I got everybody angry and they all left. I just had the booster. No side effects for you. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you didn't have any side effects. I just don't want to, I get shots every other week, but. For allergies, but that shot's different. It actually like it's like a tetanus shot. <laughs> I hated that. And I had to get a tetanus shot last month. I've been getting too many when I had to go to the ER last month. I've been getting way too many tetanus shots or um, way too many shots lately. No, you don't get any snow there, do you, Kathy? Not at all. Nope, nope. All right. Let's see what else we got here on the docket. Oh. Yeah, I don't know why he's texting me again. Let's see what's on the to-do list for today's show. Oh, I didn't put it together. I'm just going to roll with it. That's cool. So, any big plans for the weekend for you guys? Anything fun that you're going to do? Not in Australia, Juliet. I know you're not allowed to. But uh, it was kind of a joke. But based on what my editor, Ann, told me, that's actually not a joke. <laughs> Sucks. Let's see. Ooh, Robin, there should be a Sean Wyatt movie. I agree. I agree. And so here's an announcement. It's not a real announcement, but it's something to, it's a bone to throw you. Um, wow. How do you brew your coffee? Okay. That's a good question too. So here's the, here's some information about the movie. We are working my manager's working on stuff with the the film industry but i've approached a film student from southern where i went to school who is a passionate filmmaker and has been apparently doing it since he was in high school really cool kid met him two weeks ago on sunday and uh, at a friend's house and he was brilliant um we started talking and he showed me his end of semester project that him and a bunch of other film students put together and he said usually the professor you know decides which groups they work in but for that project he said you can pick your group so he said to me i figured what I wanted to know what would happen if I got all the best students to do a project with me, all the best film students. So that's what he did. And it looked good. Like it looked, the film, the cinematography was good. Some of the acting was good too. So uh, I said to him, I showed him some examples of some stuff that like comparable stuff. And I said, you know, is this something you think you could do? Like, I'm talking like a 10 to 15 minute short fan film type thing. And he said, yeah, I could definitely do that. So I said, I will put together some scenes and let you decide which one you want uh, to, to work with. I said, I will give you the synopsis of the scenes and you can write the script if you want or have one of your script writing friends do it. Or if you want me to sort of write the script, I can. That's not really my strength, but you know, I, I sort of understand how to do it. So he seems interested. seems down. So uh, I'm looking forward to that because I would like to see, you know, what what that would look like, um, you know, 
in the visual medium, like the Sean Wyatt stuff. I think it'd be cool. Dak Harper too. So how do I brew my coffee? Um, in a coffee machine, in a coffee pot. Is that right? I don't know if that's right or not. Uh, so I actually, this depends. I do use a Mr. Coffee Pot here at the house. I have an espresso machine. I have an uh, Breville espresso maker. And then, which I need to buy some pods for. But uh, I've done French press before, but I don't really do it very often because it's not... Uh, Something about the French press, when you do it with a French press, it's not good for your heart or something. I read about that last year. I need to find that article. Is that what you wanted to know? I mean, I grind my own beans. I grind them to about a medium to almost fine coarseness. And then uh, I brew it with filtered water. What's next after where horizons end? Great question, Ray. Outstanding question. Well, I do not have the plot laid out for Sean's next adventure, which will probably take, probably be released this summer. Um, I need to turn this on. Do not disturb. Normally, I have my phone on Do Not Disturb, and these alerts keep popping up. There, that'll, that'll stop them. Um, I have some ideas. I have some some thoughts of what to do with that series next. So it's going to be weird without Tommy in it, but. Any chance you guys didn't just hear me say that? Oh. Oh. Mm, what a spoiler. Oh, no. Poor Tommy. I'm just kidding. You guys know I'm kidding. I don't know where I'm, where I'm going to take that one yet. But after Where Horizons End, the next release is Gideon Wolf Book 1. It's called Emergence first foray into urban fantasy. Not really the first foray, but... Um, and then... <laughs> didn't hear a thing. Uh, after that, so I'm going to rapid release the first three Gideon Wolf, Wolf books. So Emergence, then Righteous Dawn, which is the one I'm working on right now, and then Crimson Winter will be after that. And... Uh, so the th first three Gideon Wolf books I'm going to release and I'm not going to release book one until I have book three completed. So it may be end of next month. It may be early March or late March, but once I release that one, you won't have to wait long for books two and three. So they will be coming out either within four weeks of the other book or the previous book or maybe even closer but probably four weeks i think is the at, at at the most it'll be eight weeks so every two months but i think i'm going to release one one a month for three straight months after that uh after w crimson winter we have um relic runner four the fourth dak harper book uh and that one is called heavy lies the crown so you're getting all the titles today you're getting all the book titles. So Heavy Lies the Crown is Dak Harper 4, and it deals with uh, the missing uh, the missing Welsh crown from uh, long, long ago. So um, that's that's the mystery that I'm that I'm planning on using for that one. That could change, but I think it's gonna stay. And the title is called Heavy Lies the Crown. So I think you're going to like that. I've got that synopsis all sketched out. See you, James. Thanks for popping in, buddy. Um, yay, Jonathan Hill's here. What's up? Let's answer Beth Kelly's question from Virginia. Beth, if Knoxville's getting that snow, you're going to get some, right? Or are you guys too low in elevation out there? So who would I like to play Sean Wyatt if they do a movie? Man, originally we said Chris... Chris Pratt a lot, but uh, there's another one that I saw that my manager and I were we we were looking at, and we were putting a lookbook together for a, a, an entertainment attorney, and I cannot remember his name. 
man. Or even the movies that he was in, because I don't I don't get to see a lot of movies, and so it's uh, I'm real choosy about the movies I see. Not that I have great taste in movies. I just I know what I like and I know what I'm not going to go watch. So I cannot think of who it was, but I don't know anybody who's got slightly cooler hair than mine and better looking than me will will be just fine as Sean Wyatt. <laughs> oh yeah, about a French press. Yeah, no, I mean I love uh I love my my French press, but uh, I don't have time really to do that. I just like to I'm just I'm just kidding Kathy and Beth. I'm just kidding. Back to the coffee. Yeah, I mean I just use a coffee pot though now most of the time. Tommy's fine, guys. Relax. Another one. What perspectives or beliefs have challenged you throughout the Sean Wyatt series? Mm, I don't know. It's perspectives and beliefs. Like what kind of perspectives and beliefs? Politically? Historically? Ecumenically? Religiously? Like spiritually? Mm. Um I guess that might be related to your research question, yeah? Like through the research that I've done, has something like sort of changed any any perspective or belief of mine? Uh, yes. Yeah, so one of the things that um, that changed, well, I didn't really have a strong opinion about the Church of Latter Day Saints. Um, I have some friends that are Mormons and. Um, they uh i've always thought were you know nice people and um you know real family centered and just just the friendliest people that you'll ever meet but what i didn't know about them was the history uh their well i knew their history because i studied i did a big project on the latter day saint uh, faith in high school. So I, I, I did an extensive research project about them and I learned a lot, but what I didn't learn was, uh, that, that, and I included this in, in secret of the stones was that they were, their set, their westward settlers were never really attacked by the, the tribes out there. And, um, in the story, of course, you know, if you've read Secret of the Stones, and most of you have, uh, I used the, I used this sort of a safe passage token, right? Like they had, you know, the settlers had gold that they were helping other indigenous tribes um, remove from the Southeast so the American government wouldn't have it. Um, that was, you know, that was, I made that part up. That part was fiction, um, which is funny because I've had some people from <laughs> that denomination that have reached out and told me that that was incorrect. And I'm like, it was a tool I had to use to make the story make sense. It actually also is hypothetically possible. Like it's, it's a highly plausible, the way that I laid it all out actually made a ton of sense and is congruent. So, uh, but what I learned was about that. And the only thing that I could figure was that um, it was because I guess that they were just genuinely nice people and uh, didn't, they weren't a threat to, to natives. And so um, maybe I'm wrong about that, but that sort of, it didn't, you know, it didn't really change my perspective, so to say, so to speak, but it was, it definitely changed. It just added one more layer of appreciation to that group, um, you know, for me. So it's sort of, it just raised my appreciation for people like my friend Ben Hale, who's uh, who's a fantasy author out in Missouri and awesome person, and um, you know some of my other friends that are in that faith. So I hope that answered your question. Um, as far as other perspectives and beliefs, I have you know I was this is a, this is an excellent one because it's making me think. So another one was um, I was raised. Seventh-day Adventist, I still practice the Sabbath and, and all that. 
Seventh Day Adventist faith. But um, we were taught, you know, that the earth is 7,000 years old and based on the biblical timeline. And that is correct if you base it on the biblical timeline. But I think that the perspective that I have changed in my studies because I learned about Aboriginal tribes that were around, you know, 20, 30, 40,000 years ago. And Obekli Tepe in Turkey is 13,000 years old. And, um, you know, they're not using the same kind of dating techniques necessarily that they use um, for fossils, which may or may not be flawed, right? It's, you know, carbon dating, we were told is the most accurate thing we have. But um, when you talk about uh, studying time in reference to weathering and erosion and things like that, it's different. And I believe that it's pretty accurate. And so the perspective and the beliefs that I've changed based on my studies and research still are congruent with my faith. It just changes the timeline. Just that's all it is. And I believe in a creator that is timeless, that exists in, outside the bonds of space and time. Right. So, um, you know, it doesn't really matter to me how old the earth is or whatever. Um, we also know, you know, I was I went to a Seventh day Adventist school and I was taught about the Ice Age in, in that school. And the Ice Age happened. We we can track that pretty, pretty easily back to about 12,000 years ago, 13,000 years ago when the planet started warming. And it's been warming ever since. That's why all the like there were continental glaciers all the way down to Kentucky and like wherever you live, there were continental glaciers probably unless you were on the equator. And um, now they're not. And now all like the last remnants of glaciers are melting. So it changed my perspective on that. Um, it also learning that history and learning those um, the science the science based studies also sort of changed my view on short-term climate change. So uh, initially I was very against like fossil fuels and um, stuff like that. And I, I'm not, I'm still not like pro fossil fuel. I think we, you know, we need less pollution in the cities. We need to clean up the air. You know, we need, we, we do need that, right? Like less smog is not a bad thing. Um, but, you know, when you're talking about over the course of 13,000 years, have the last 100 years been helpful to the environment? No, but it's hard to put your finger on, like, how much of an effect. So it actually, studying the history and the science sort of flipped my view, my perspective on that a little bit, um, because we live on a big dadgum planet, and it's, uh, it's going to go through these cycles every, like, I don't know, five to 10,000 years, whatever it is. So, uh, and sooner or later, we're going to pay one way or the other. Mother nature is going to punish us. But yeah, now I lost like 3000 people because I was talking about climate change. And they like, he's wrong. He is wrong. But you asked, you asked my, the question, Allison. So this is the, pers this is my answer. I'm not saying I'm right. This is just my perspective. I could be very wrong about everything I say and everything I believe in, but that's the thing about me. I tell people this all the time. I'm the easiest person to persuade. Like you can, you, you present me any semi-decent argument against what I'm saying. And I'll say, oh yeah, you know, you know, that makes sense. Okay. That's what I think now. Easy. So, you know, yeah, I've spent a few hundred hours studying this stuff and researching and all that, but, um, doesn't mean I know everything. I don't, I'm not right. And so my beliefs based, you know, back to your question, my beliefs and perspectives are always changing based on new information. Sometimes it's little changes, sometimes it's big changes. So there you go. But back to the, back to the climate thing. I did, I was looking like about 16, 17 years ago, I was looking at getting a diesel truck and um, running vegetable oil through it. So they make those uh, those conversion kits so you can run vegetable oil through it. I thought it was cool. Dude, how good is that monsoon Malabar? I still have a little bit left. I've been drinking perk this week, but I think I might dry I might drink the rest of that. I think I got two pots left. I gotta buy some more. 
is good coffee. Yeah, you know, I have not practiced my Welsh accent. I don't even, I'd, I'd have to listen to it. I don't even know if I've met a person from Wales. So. How, who's playing Sean Wyatt? Oh, me. How about me playing it? No, I'm not good looking enough. I'm too, I'm too scruffy and skinny. Like this part, this part quarter profile maybe is good enough but the rest of the package is all uh, i'm not confident enough do i have the acting chops absolutely i love acting it's it's a blast and it's it, it cracks me up but no i don't usually I, i'm not going to be able to to do that I'm not gonna not gonna be able to do that all right look into ancient treasures websites oh Oh yeah. Yes, that's cool. So, oh man, I I'll have to send it to you, right? I I posted a a picture of something uh last week I think it was on on here on Facebook of of a wolf's head necklace that I that I got down in Atlanta at this uh market. So, oh. Yeah, LDS SDA. You know what? Kathy, we all end up in the same place sooner or later. And that place is Walmart. <laughs> Come on, that was great. You got to give me like at least 52 laughs on that one. Come on. Is the show really gotten that bad? Like we don't have as many people watching live right now. I think it's because I need to like spruce things up. So... Maybe I'll start bringing some guests on to get the get the juice going. Oh man, it's already been fifty minutes. All right, man. When I start rambling, I start. I just don't stop. Good grief! No wonder you. Maybe no wonder so few people are watching live anymore. The, my ratings are down. Please don't cancel me. Please tell you what we're gonna do. We're gonna break one of your toes for every point you lose in the ratings. What? You're going to break my toes? What's with the Brooklyn accent again? Don't worry about it. But you get those ratings up, kid, or else Tony Two Toes is coming. And Lenny the Wrench. There you go. There you There's some laughing. Boom, boom. Yes. Excellent. Thank you for the laughs. I feel like that. I don't like the angle of my computer. Like I would like it if it was up here. This would feel more normal. I'd have to set it on like four books to make that work. Oh, the lighting is way better that way though. Hmm. Maybe. I don't know. Seems like a lot of work to stack up four books right there on my desk. I got all those French versions of the Vatican Mystique, whatever it is could use those. Please, nobody ask me for an autographed copy right now. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to get a call from my accountant next week. Like, hey, uh, why'd you spend so much money on stamps.com? Well, you see, Lisa, um, I had ran some giveaways, and I ended up giving away more books than I planned. I gotta, I gotta re, a, I got to restock books. I still have some. But I'm all out of country roads. I'm all out. I sent the last two copies out this week to prize winners. Jeez. All right. All right. Well, that's right. I could have. I'm not sending you. I'm not sending you anything else for at least a month, Allison. I for I man, I was worried you weren't gonna get this package too, because that would have been two two for two misses. Oh for two. Yeah, that's what I need to get. It's just once a week. I just put books there. I'm too lazy. Yeah, I know. Our um RD RD said she would come on the show and um <laughs> doesn't matter. Hey, Allison, it doesn't matter. It's like it's like when people used to say, like, 
I don't believe in God. And I said, I would say, that's okay. He believes in you. You may not have a Walmart, but you're still going to end up there anyway, one way or the other. Someday you'll end up at Walmart. <laughs> or whatever European version of it you guys have over there. Well, hello. Oh, you're listening. Oh, that's cool. I'm glad it's cool and surround sound. That's neat. Very cool. I like to hear what you guys are doing and like what what you know where you're where you're watching shows or you know like if you could like use your phone and do like airplay to a big television screen like one in Times Square, ooh, that'd be a cool hack job if one of you could do that. Just Bluetooth the show. Oh man, if you did that, if one of you could figure out how to do that, it's a probably illegal. So you probably do jail time, and I can't really encourage it. But if it did happen, my goodness, that would be amazing. I don't know if it would like do anything for my career, but it would be really cool to see it happen. Somebody hacks Times Square, jumbotrons. Huh. You're very welcome. No, happy to, Allison. You're you go above and beyond helping, and uh, and and it's awesome. I have got to answer those interview questions you sent me. Uh, I'll try remind me on Sunday. I'll try to do it Sunday morning. <clears throat> yeah, well, I you know that's one that I need to reach out to, or that needs to reach out to me. Tell them to message me on here because lately I've just I haven't been seeing. Um, I've been so buried and I have such limited schedule that I haven't been good with answering emails, and I hate it because I love talking to you guys and chatting via email, and you guys are so sweet sending me such nice messages and I know that everybody doesn't do social media stuff and um, but I try to I want to try to get you know engage with you guys as much as possible so listen I hear my kid giggling downstairs sounds like she's being tickling but it reminds me that I have to go okay so I will see you Sunday morning it's playoff weekend so we're gonna have a lot of great NFL matchups. Congratulations to the Georgia Bulldogs for your first national championship in 41 years. You now have three national championships. Congratulations. That's half as many as the Vols, but that's cool. That's great. You're on a great upward track. So, uh, but I did have to throw that little snarky bit in there. No, I'm very happy. In fact, my dad has probably cheered for the Georgia Bulldogs more over his lifetime than than the Vols because my family's been in North Georgia for like 220 years. So um, he's a big, big Georgia guy. So I, I called him the next day and I said, so did you cry last night? He goes, oh yeah, I cried. I was so happy, so happy they won. I know a lot of friends of mine were in tears. They've been waiting a long, long time. So congratulations, University of Georgia for your football national championship. Enjoy it, because the Vols are coming, baby. We're coming. 2022. Watch out. That was really creepy. Yeah, yeah. Tell LC. Tell tell her to, to message me, and uh, I'll. I'll. Luke Richardson's got a good system for scheduling uh, his guests on books and beer. By the way, if you're not doing anything at noon. This coming Wednesday, right, Allison? This coming Wednesday, I believe Kevin Tumlinson is going to be on Luke Richardson's Books and Beer Show right here on Facebook Live. And I think he might stream it to YouTube as well. So you guys know Luke. He's an author, great guy, great writer. I love the way that he puts himself into the places where stories are, are happening. Um and just a wonderful person. And of course, Kevin's a jerk. So that's going to be an amazing show to watch a real talent and a genuine, the genuine article, the, a really great writer and a great person, completely contrasted by a total hack job and a jerk, Kevin Tomlinson. So, uh, Definitely, definitely tune into that show on Wednesday at noon, Books and Beer, Luke Richardson Show with Kevin Tumlinson. It's going to be great. Both both are great guys. Kevin's a dear friend of mine, so I think you're going to love it. If 
you're into that sort of thing. All right, y'all. Shovel early and often, Ray. Love you, man. <laughs> See you guys. Y'all have a wonderful... <laughs> remind Kevin. That's how I am. You got to remind me too. All right, y'all. Listen, y'all have a wonderful weekend, guys. Thanks for listening to me rant about all the, my crazy thoughts. And don't forget, I can be persuaded to change my mind. So I'll see y'all on Sunday morning. Y'all be safe out there.